In the second half of the 19th century, phylloxera decimated the grapevines of the south and the west of France before reaching the Champagne region where it destroyed half the vineyards within 10 years. Small growers forced to dig up and replace their vines at great expense were on the verge of bankruptcy. Paris 1900. As part of the World Fair, the Palais du Champagne exhibition helped consolidate the status of this peerless wine recognized the world over. This was the Belle Époque, marked by a faith in technological, scientific and social progress. However, the winds of injustice fanned the embers of fury in the Champagne vineyards as certain dishonest wine brokers and merchants brought in low-cost wines by rail from outside the region to be turned into Champagne. In 1904, the wine growers, led by Edmond Bain, organized themselves into a syndicate representing the Champagne region. The following year, the authorities passed a law with the aim of curbing fraud, but in practice it was inapplicable without additional measures. For five years, rebellion simmered in Champagne and matters were not helped by the disastrous harvests of 1907 and 1910. On October the 16th, 1910, the wine growers syndicate, the Fédération des Syndicats de la Champagne Viticole, took action, organizing an unprecedented meeting in Epernay that drew 10,000 people. To force the government to legislate, a strike was called on the payment of taxes. The situation became explosive in the early months of 1911. The prefect of the Marne region alerted President Aristide Briand, telling him, great misery alters people's perception of morality. He then sent the 31st Dragoons into Epernay to restore order. In Paris, Parliament was preparing a new law forcing wine growers to officially declare on bottles that their wine was produced in the Champagne region. On February the 11th, the law was ratified by the Senate. The Champagne vineyards were jubilant. The wine growers' cheers could be heard as far away as Paris. But in their haste to pass the bill, MPs excluded the vineyards of the Aube from the official Champagne region. Reaction was swift. On April the 9th, more than 20,000 demonstrators marched on Troyes to demand that the traditional Aube vineyards be included in the official Champagne region. Several town councils resigned. Wine growers burned their tax demands. On the 11th of April, the new government, led by Ernest Muniz, seeking appeasement at all costs, announced plans to abolish the official Champagne region completely. This blunder was a bombshell in the Marne. From Dizy to Damry, from Fleury to Venteuil, right the way up to Aïe, the news swept through the valley like wildfire. Led by red and tricolour flags, the wine growers converged on Epernay to vent their wrath. 4,000 of them gathered in the centre of Aï, which only had a handful of cavaliers to protect it. The wine growers attacked the presumed fraudsters, burning down several major houses, including the Bissinger house. In the following day's newspapers, a stunned France read about the uprising of wine growers fighting for the integrity and quality of produce in the Champagne region. The scale of the rebellion led to 40,000 troops being sent to the region. In Paris, the violence of the Languedoc wine growers' uprisings of 1907 was still fresh in the memory. Two months later, a decree gave the wine growers of the Aube a degree of satisfaction, according them the official status of Champagne region of the second zone. While the rebellion subsided, frustrations remained. But the wine growers had learned the benefits of uniting through a cooperative movement to defend their traditions and their jobs. Unfortunately, the dynamic of those years of struggle was stopped in its tracks by the First World War, which decimated the male population and laid waste part of the Champagne region. The armistice had barely been signed in November 1918, when the wine industry in Champagne was up and running again. In Paris and all over Europe, people were anxious to put the horrors of four years of war behind them. Celebrations were widespread and the Champagne flowed. Victor Filbert, head of the General Syndicate of Wine Growers, called for action, urging the establishment of Champagne region cooperatives. Alphonse Perrin and Gaston Poitevin capitalized on this new momentum. 
On the basis of the 1911 struggle, they drafted the statutes of the first cooperative. On September the 16th, 1921, a constituent general meeting of Cogevi was held in Epernay. Soon afterwards, the cooperative began to develop its own brand. In the 1930s, Cogevi returned to Ai at the heart of the Champagne region. Twenty years later, the cooperative acquired the Bissinger House, the scene of the uprisings of 1911, which is still its headquarters today. Right from the outset, harvest after harvest, member wine growers have continued to offer quality champagne, faithful to the values of the pioneers who rose up to defend champagne and its heritage.